3.41am, Bakhmut was still burning. Six men, one laptop, and a swarm of Ukrainian drones waits in silence. Outside, over 100 Wagner fighters and armored vehicles advance through the ruins, hunting for survivors. One question, how do you stop an army when all you have are drones? Spoiler, they had no tanks, no artillery, just drones. And in one hour, Bakhmut burned Wagner's advance to ashes. In the next 10 minutes, you'll discover how FPV drones outsmarted Russian armor inside the ruins of Bakhmut, how real-time intelligence turned chaos into control, and how six operators became the eyes of an army on the brink of collapse. This isn't a news recap or propaganda. This is modern warfare, decoded through the men who lived it. Did you know? In just an hour, six men crippled an entire Wagner assault group, destroying over 30 armored vehicles with drones built from garage parts. No artillery, no air support, only signal jammers, wind, and their will to fight. Their combat footage didn't just go viral. It became real battlefield intelligence for Ukraine's counteroffensive. And here's the part no one shows you. Not the news, not the military briefings, not even the official reports. This is cinematic intelligence. Real warfare, decoded. Here's how six drone operators changed the battle for Bakhmut. At 3.41 a.m., the streets of Bakhmut were silent. The kind of silence that presses against your chest. Too heavy, too still. Inside a shattered school building, six men crouched around a flickering monitor. Static from a drone feed hissed through the air, like electricity waiting to strike. Outside, the wind carried faint tremors, engines, dozens of them. The Wagner Group was advancing through the eastern approach. Armored vehicles, infantry, and mercenaries with night vision scopes sweeping the dark. They were less than two kilometers away from cutting off the last Ukrainian retreat route. The drone operator adjusted his headset. His call sign was Ghost 19. His eyes didn't blink. His voice didn't shake. Target grid confirmed, he whispered. All drones, stand by for ignition. In the next 60 seconds, the quiet night over Bakhmut would turn into a storm of fire. Bakhmut, once a city of 70,000 islands, had become a cratered maze of ruins and smoke. Every corner held ghosts. Every street a battlefield. The Ukrainian 93rd Mechanized Brigade was exhausted. Weeks of artillery strikes had crushed their supply lines. Ammunition came by night, carried on shoulders through mud and shrapnel. Their infantry was outnumbered five to one. The Wagner Group units, hardened and reckless, pressed forward with near endless reinforcements. They moved with brutal efficiency, clearing blocks with thermals, using human waves to drain the defenders' fire. The Ukrainians had no heavy armor left in the sector, no air support, no artillery worth mentioning. Just a handful of operators, men who traded rifles for remote controls. They called themselves the Eyes. Their mission wasn't to win the city. It was simpler and far harder. Protect the retreating infantry and keep the escape corridor open. As the commander, Major Serhi, leaned over the map, his tone was steady. We hold them for one hour. That's all. If we break, the corridor collapses. If we hold, they live. And for that one hour, every drone would matter more than any tank. The first explosions came at dawn's edge, flashes cutting through fog like lightning without thunder. Wagner units breached the eastern line, pouring through destroyed apartment blocks. Machine guns barked, tracer rounds slicing through the gray haze. Ukrainian units fell back, floor by floor, buying seconds at a time. In the command post, Ghost 19's monitor shook with interference. Drone 3 lost signal, his teammate muttered. Jammed. Another feed went dark, just static and silence. Then the shelling started. Mortars landed close, shaking plaster from the ceiling. One blast knocked out power. Only the glow of laptop screens remained. Inside the room, dust fell like snow. We're blind, someone said. But Ghost 19 didn't move. He reconnected a damaged antenna, adjusted the signal manually. And there it was, a faint feed from above the city, burning vehicles, advancing infantry. The team could see them now. The Wagner column pushing towards the last open road west of Bakhmut. For a moment, no one spoke. No orders. No sound, but the hum of drones returning online. 
Then, Major Serhi broke the silence. We hold this ground with intelligence, not firepower. Outside, the city screamed. Inside, six men prepared to make history. When all else failed, they turned to ingenuity. Major Serhi's plan was simple and suicidal if it failed. They would coordinate a swarm strike of improvised FPV drones, some carrying anti-tank grenades, others loaded with makeshift explosives, to stall the Wagner advance. We wait. We strike once. We vanish. The operators dispersed into cellars and hallways, each man with a laptop, a battery, and a prayer. The sound of drones spinning up echoed faintly through the rubble, like mechanical hornets ready for vengeance. Their targets, armored trucks, command vehicles, and the lead platoon pushing through the bottleneck near the city's central railway. The idea was to collapse the column from the front, turning the street into a metal graveyard. The drones were crude, handmade in garages and workshops, but they had precision born of desperation and pilots who could thread a propeller through a broken window at 200 meters. Range locked, Ghost-19 murmured. His finger hovered over the transmitter switch. Major said he gave the signal, one quiet word through the radio, execute. And the air above Bakhmut filled with the rising hum of 12 drones, flying low, fast, invisible against the smoke. Each one carried more than explosives. They carried the last hope of an army on the edge of defeat. At 4.18 a.m., the first drone struck. A flash, then silence, then chaos. The lead Wagner armored vehicle erupted, its turrets spinning skyward. Flames rolled down the street as debris slammed into walls. Before the enemy could react, the second wave hit. FPV drones dove from opposite angles, slicing through the mist like guided fury. One crashed into an ammunition truck. The explosion lit the sky orange, casting long shadows across the ruins. Inside their hiding spot, Ghost-19 and his team worked like machines. No words, just coordinates, breathing and static. Each hit confirmed meant another 30 seconds bought for the infantry to retreat. The radio crackled. They're stopping. They're regrouping. Wagner's advance collapsed into confusion. Their formation, broken. Their vehicles, burning. Their comms, jammed. A single surviving drone found the command truck. Ghost-19 guided it manually. The screen flickering from signal interference. 50 meters, 30, 10, impact. A fireball swallowed the vehicle whole. For the first time in hours, the Ukrainian defenders heard something new over the city. Silence, but not the silence of fear. The silence of shock of disbelief that they were still alive. Through the static, Major Serhi's voice came through, calm, almost reverent. They're pulling back, the road's clear. In less than 10 minutes, a handful of drones had done what artillery couldn't. They halted an entire assault column. The swarm had worked, and the defenders of Bakhmut, battered, outnumbered, and half broken, had turned the tide. When the fires faded, the streets were quiet again. The team emerged from the basement, faces coated in dust, hands trembling from adrenaline. Half their drones were gone. Their antennas were burned, batteries drained, but they had done it. The retreating infantry, dozens of men, made it through the corridor a lot. Ghost 19 sat beside a shattered window, watching the smoke drift over the city. His eyes followed a small figure running through the street, a medic carrying a wounded soldier on his back. We bought them time, he whispered. The others nodded silently. Behind them, the building still smoldered. A shell fragment had hit their command post minutes before the counter-strike. Two operators never made it out. Their laptops still lay open, screens cracked, drones still transmitting faint static. Victory had come, but it demanded its price, and they paid it without hesitation. By dawn, the Wagner column was gone. What was left burned quietly beyond the eastern ruins. Ukrainian reinforcements re-entered the sector hours later. They found the drone team still at their posts, silent, watching the skies. Major Serhi's report was short. Objective complete. Corridor secured. Enemy halted. But among the ranks, the story spread quickly. Of six men, armed with nothing but intelligence, improvisation, and courage, who held a city line when no one else could. Their footage would later circle the world, 
Drone cam views of burning armor, collapsing convoys, and precision strikes executed with impossible calm. But for the team itself, it was never about glory. It was about holding their brothers long enough to fight another day. As one soldier later wrote on the ruins wall, in chalk, we had no artillery, so we became the artillery. In Bakhmut, intelligence became the deadliest weapon, and courage, the only defense that never runs out. If you believe stories like this deserve to be remembered, subscribe and share. Because courage is the weapon they can't destroy.